Now on 4 News Now at 6, a fence is in place around Washington's largest homeless camp. Tonight, the other changes coming to Camp Hope to keep people safe. October starts this weekend, but it's not going to feel that way. I'll let you know how warm our temperatures are going to get in your first alert forecast. And a change in direction when it comes to student loan forgiveness. We'll show you which student loans won't be forgiven and how many people will have to pay their bills. You're watching 4 News Now at 6. There is a fence around Camp Hope tonight. Earlier this week, we told you about new changes coming to the area, and one of those is a fence. Yeah, in preparation for this, WashDOT, Jules Helping Hands, and people at camp have been cleaning extra trash and rearranging RVs around the camp's perimeter. Bronte Saratsky was at Camp Hope earlier and tells us about other changes campers can expect in the near future. Bronte. People living at Camp Hope could see more changes in the coming weeks. This fence is just the start. We moved the perimeter in three feet all around the entire camp. That meant moving RVs and rows and rows of tents. Camp Hope has a newer look these days. On Friday, WashDOT contractors worked to put up a fence to secure the perimeter. Soon, Jules Helping Hands will start working security overnight to ensure people aren't leaving between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. That starts Friday night. Not locked in, but there's three access points and all three access points will have somebody manning those gates. As for security surrounding the camp, Brian Coddington with the city of Spokane confirmed that the city has extended their contract for security outside of the camp through the end of October. A spokesperson with WashDOT says they are working to contract security after the city's contract is up. WashDOT sent a new statement about the new fencing that says in part, while this work begins the process of strategically decreasing the size and footprint of Camp Hope, there is more to do, including RV removal, encampment identification, badging, a curfew, and other associated rules, and an increased security presence within the neighborhood. Garcia said badging will be introduced once Jules Helping Hands finishes their census of everyone staying in the camp. So next week we will be implementing a badge with a picture so we know who's here and who's not here. Spokane's assistant fire marshal walked through the camp Friday to ensure the exits are safe and accessible to the sidewalk. After a walkthrough of the perimeter today, the assistant fire marshal confirmed that the exits are safe for those living at Camp Hope. Reporting in Spokane, Bronte Sorotsky, 4 News Now. Well, the skies have cleared just in time for the weekend. Warm temps on the way. The weather's perfect to get outside. Maybe do a little yard work. I know Matt Gray has some dandelions that are calling his name. <laughs> Yes, they certainly are. Oh, boy. All right. Well, on to happier things. And that is the great improvement in our weather. It was a little bit cloudy this morning, and that's part of the reason why it has stayed somewhat cool and fall-like today. Well, those clouds moving away. The sun has come out, and it is a beautiful evening and a great start to the weekend. You can see still some places in the 50s. 57 in Sandpoint, Lookout Pass up in the mountains were in the 50s. 60s, though, mostly across the region, and 70s in places like Omac and Moses Lake, where we have been warm all day, and where we saw a lot of that cloud cover and rain yesterday, especially in the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene corridor, we're about 9, 10 degrees above where we were at this time yesterday. So just goes to show you what a little bit of sunshine will do to your temperatures, especially this time of the year. Sunshine becomes at a premium. Might see a couple areas of patchy fog tonight as we did see quite a bit of fog this morning. Temperatures in the upper 40s as we roll around to the beginning of Saturday. However, we expect a quick warm up and even warmer temperatures as we head through Saturday, Sunday and beyond. I'll show you how warm it's going to get in your forecast coming up. Matt, thank you. Also new tonight, there's a lit up billboard driving around campus at the University of Idaho displaying pro birth control signs like the ones you see here, telling people they can still access birth control, plan B and abortion pills in Idaho. The moving billboard was paid for by Mayday Health and is in response to Idaho's anti-abortion laws. Those include state employees from promoting or endorsing abortion or emergency contraception. That includes employees at the University of Idaho. 
but the university says the law does not specify what is considered promoting abortion. Mayday Health says it believes the First Amendment protects the right to share information and educates students about the right to an abortion. New tonight at 6, two people are facing charges after police in Sandpoint say they seized what they believe is fentanyl, heroin, and other dangerous drugs this week in a series of search warrants. Police say the raid was in response to a couple of fentanyl overdoses in North Idaho involving a teen who recovered and a 21-year-old who died. This is a look at some of what police took off the streets. You're looking at what's known as blues on the streets as well as skittles. Both are suspected of being forms of fentanyl. The pills commonly have the letter M stamped into one of their sides and the number 30 on the other. Daryl David of Bonners Ferry and Rachel Straley of Spokane were both arrested, cited, and released for meth and drug possession. Sandpoint police say more charges are likely after they get the lab test results back on those pills to confirm that they are fentanyl. Police say they joined DEA agents in tracking that pair down at a motel and searching a separate home this week to find the suspected fentanyl as well as heroin, meth, and other drug, drug paraphernalia. Well, a woman is dead and a man is seriously hurt after Idaho State Police say a wrong way crash happened early this morning in the Post Falls area. Police say the crash happened a little after 1230 this morning near McGuire Road on Interstate 90. They say one of the drivers was driving on the wrong side and hit the other. Officers are not saying which driver was going the wrong way. Both had to be cut out of their vehicles and they were rushed to a hospital. Police say the woman later died and the man is still in critical condition tonight. Officers say several other vehicles were damaged after hitting debris in the road from this crash. A building that's been trying to operate as a homeless shelter since August 19th has now been cleared out by the city after reportedly being in violation of several city codes. City officials cited fire code and food safety violations before issuing a notice to vacate. This building is on 2nd and Monroe and it housed 72 homeless people before being vacated. KXLY's Jordan Smith caught up with the pastor who owned the building. He joins us now with more. Well, this shelter was run by God's Love International, and it was only open for about a month before the city deemed it to be in violation of numerous city codes. They were asked to vacate the property Thursday afternoon, sending over 70 people without homes back onto the streets. Ronald Nelson had big plans for this building to transform it into a place those without a home could find shelter and a warm meal. So we opened the door in good faith, knowing that what we we're doing it was the right thing. But the city of Spokane never approved this as a homeless shelter, paying him a visit shortly after they opened their doors. When they did that walkthrough prior to the meeting, they said we didn't have any fire alarms. We had a person downstairs, and that person was in an uh, area that didn't have two egresses, so they couldn't be downstairs. The city also cited the building was in need of a fire suppression system something Nelson remains adamant that he has a five-year window to install and is not required to be an immediate fix. So as far as fire is concerned, we are completely compliant with absolutely everything that the city asked us to do. He's arguing this shelter acts as an RCW, which essentially allows for emergency exemptions for housing the needy. The city, however, says that doesn't apply. The reason being, Nelson was utilizing this building with mixed use, meaning the building wasn't strictly being utilized as a shelter, it was also acting as Nelson's residence, something Nelson has grown frustrated with. It is no different than any of the churches around here that have sleeping quarters for their pastors. Absolutely no different. It's not a single family residence, it's a place for the pastor to lay his head. On Thursday afternoon, the city issued this notice to vacate until the building is up to code in the eyes of the city. And Nelson tells me he's working with the city to address these violations to get these doors back open as soon as possible. Reporting in Spokane tonight, I'm Jordan Smith, 4 News Now. World leaders are outraged over Russia annexing parts of Ukraine. How the U.S. and its allies are responding, coming up. Ian continues to make its way up the eastern seaboard, flooding parts of South Carolina as families in Florida begin the long process of rebuilding after losing everything. That's coming up. Four News Now on your time with Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Four News Now is brought to you by End the Violence. I proudly served our nation and fought for freedom abroad. 
I never expected to see our temple of democracy ransacked here at home. It's so dangerous that MAGA Republicans, like Mitch McConnell's hand-picked candidate for U.S. Senate, Tiffany Smiley, continue to question the 2020 election. Their big lie is a direct threat to our elections and our democracy. Join me in defending America. Say no to Tiffany Smiley before it's too late. I'm Patty Murray, and I approve this message. Inland Imaging and Community Cancer Fund are teaming up to beat cancer. Low-dose screening CT exams may reduce lung cancer deaths by more than 20% by finding early-stage cancers other methods miss. If you're over 50, a longtime smoker, or have other risk factors, lung cancer screening can provide potentially life-saving answers. Ask your doctor or call 363-7799. Inland Imaging, answers you can trust and care you can count on. Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. But one day, this lecture hall will be made of code. And though they're virtual students, what they'll learn together is real. A surgeon will be able to practice as many times as needed in the metaverse before laying her hands on a real patient. Being able to explore a spacecraft is one thing, but the metaverse will let us go farther than any rocket can take us. In the future, Students will be able to take a field trip to ancient Rome. And young artists can learn from a masterpiece. Farmers will one day use augmented reality to help ensure the best yields. And urban planners will be able to model traffic solutions to help decrease commute times. So while the metaverse may be virtual, the impact will be real. My uh, son's name was Carson. He was just the light of my life. His anxiety and his inability to sleep caused him to purchase a pill from Snapchat, and we know that it's what killed him. Congresswoman McMorris Rogers is bringing awareness to this. She personally reached out to me. She took the time to hear Carson's story. She has been driven in trying to prevent further loss. I'm Kathy McMorris Rogers, and I approve this message. Hurricane Ian continues to make its way up the eastern seaboard, flooding parts of South Carolina. It made landfall as a Category 1 hurricane, but has since been downgraded. That does not mean people living in the area are no longer in danger, with winds reaching 70 miles per hour. In Florida, recovery efforts continue as millions of families are still without power. President Biden promising his administration will do whatever it takes to help. ABC's Morgan Norwood gives a look at some of the damage as families get ready to rebuild their lives. After decimating parts of Southwest Florida, Ian making landfall in Georgetown, South Carolina, with Category 1 winds of 85 miles per hour, staring down the South Carolina coast, kicking up rough surf on Tybee Island, Georgia. While the Southeast feels the wrath of this storm, Ian's devastation in parts of Florida becoming painfully clear. We started to see the water coming through the windows. I would say it'd take a few days to get everything clean. Across the state, hundreds of water rescues. 25 helicopters, 25 boats, and over 1,200 of what we call high water vehicles that can really get into those remote areas through water to help rescue people. And watch as crews pulled this man from piles of rubble and debris in Fort Myers. His wife still missing. In Naples, the power of water on full display. Further inland, a flooding catastrophe. Water swallowing homes and businesses in Orlando's Orange County. I just want the people of Florida to know we see what you're going through and we're with you. We're going to do everything we can for you. As Florida races to recover, 1,000 FEMA personnel deployed, supplying millions of liters of water, meals, and hundreds of generators. There's a lot of people that are going to need a lot of help. FEMA has individual assistance for this uh, community, which is important, but they're only allowed to do certain things, so we really want to enlist the help of the private sector to be able to help us and help people get back on their feet. Venice, Florida hit incredibly hard. A transformer blew here at this mobile home community, bursting into flames. These homes right behind me burning to the ground. Still 2 million people across the state of Florida without power. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Venice, Florida. 
Well, it's been seven months since the crisis in Ukraine began. World leaders are now outraged over Russian President Vladimir Putin's decision to annex territories it occupies in Ukraine. Russia pledging to defend that area by any means necessary, even threatening the possible use of nuclear weapons. In response, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky is accelerating its part to join NATO. Experts say the move is mostly symbolic and potential membership is likely years away. Putin saying it's the will of millions of people in Ukraine calling it a sham, saying citizens were forced to cast their vote at gunpoint. The sham routine that he put on this morning that's showing the unity and, you know, as people holding hands together. Well, the United States is never going to recognize this. And quite frankly, the world's not going to recognize it either. He can't seize his neighbor's territory and get away with it. As simple as that. The U.S. and G7 allies are imposing further sanctions on Russia because of the annexation. If you're feeling anxious for whatever reason, it's going to be really wonderful weather this weekend. That should help lift the mood. I know it's certainly going to lift mine. We're also going to be seeing our temperatures lift into summer-like territory. I'll show you what I mean coming up. Sign up for breaking news alerts with the 4 News Now app. 4 News Now is brought to you by A to Z Rentals. I think at Hospice of Spokane, it's not just a job. It's a career, but it's also a passion. Nurses, the social workers, the chaplains, the health aides, they just do a phenomenal job and they get to know the clients. They don't come to treat just the client. They come to embrace the family as a whole. To serve with the region's number one hospice team, visit hospiceofspokane.org. These doors are closed because it's too dangerous to ask employees to work here anymore. Think about that. For decades, Patty Murray has spearheaded reckless policies that lead to shortages, inflation, and so much crime that you can't even get a cup of coffee from the hometown shop on Capitol Hill, even if you could still afford it. 30 years in the Senate, and this is what she has to show for it? If she won't do the job, I will. I'm Tiffany Smiley, and I approve this message. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. Oh wait, there is. Bring your friends. Good morning, America. GMA 7A. Now that's how you start your day. Spokane Tribe Casino's latest expansion is ready for you to enjoy. With double the square footage, there's no shortage of fun. Try one of the over 300 new slot games and have a bite to eat at the Just Open Grill and Bar restaurant. There's even a larger non-smoking area. You can also bet on all your favorite teams at Caesars Sportsbook. Now open. Steal your share of Frankenstein fortunes every Saturday this October. He's got $60,000 cash and your piece is waiting. Only at Spokane Tribe Casino. You just win here. How dirty is the water the victims of Hurricane Ian find themselves wading in? Next, Inside Edition, could these floodwaters make people sick? Standing water becomes a breeding zone. Then, <laughs> seven brides, one dress, and one $100 gown passed down through the generations for seven decades. I never considered any other dress. Watch the next Inside Edition. Watch 4 News Now at 6 and Inside Edition at 7. Take a look at this. Hollywood's most recognizable icons getting a much needed facelift. Crews are in the process of washing and painting the famous Hollywood sign. The sign hasn't been renovated in more than 10 years. Crews say the job will take roughly 400 gallons of paint. The sign's 100th birthday is coming up. That is a lot of paint. <laughs> It is. It's a lot of paint. <laughs> it's also the most overrated hike in California. I just want to throw that whoa, out there. Whoa, whoa, okay. Come on. All right. Now. I know. It's Shots a hot fired. take. It's hey, not great. I mean, yeah, uh, whatever. I, I haven't been that way, so I, I can't say any experience to that. Uh, Hey, you know, we keep losing daylight up here, and you've definitely noticed that. I've certainly noticed it getting darker earlier in the evening. Sunset tonight, 631. <laughs> 6.31. Oh, boy. Can't wait for the time change, right? 63 in Spokane right now. 62 in Coeur d'Alene. Still sunny, at least for the next 
few minutes or so. Temperatures across the metro, as you can see, all generally in the low to mid 60s, and we'll drop to the 50s, I think, pretty quickly here once the sun goes down during the 7 or 8 o'clock hours. So here we go. By 9 o'clock, you can see 59 degrees, 11 o'clock, 52, so it should be a fairly nice evening, at least what's left of it for uh, maybe sitting out on the porch, only about 15 minutes or so. <laughs> Lows tonight, 48 for Spokane, 50 in Coeur d'Alene, lots of 40s on the board here, and uh, part of the cloud cover moving away, that'll help uh, kind of cool us off at least a little bit, but we remain above average with our morning lows. That is a trend that's going to continue along with our afternoon highs where it's going to feel more like late summer than at this point. We're getting pretty deep into fall with October just around the corner. In fact, starting tomorrow. So an amazing weekend. Lots of sun, above average warmth and those storms staying away. So you should be... Uh, Probably thankful that we have some of that rain. I'll talk more about that at 6.30. Why we was lucky that we got the rain when we did yesterday. But here's how things go. A beautiful sunny Saturday with highs in the 70s. Nobody's going to complain about that. A little bit of a northeast wind that should keep our air, number one, clean. And number two, will give at least a little bit of a fall feel, even though it'll feel pretty, uh, pretty warm by the time we get into the afternoon as we're getting used to these more consistently cooler temperatures. 76 for Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. Some 80s on the board. Omac, Colville, Grand Coulee, Moses Lake. Ritzville going to be close and we'll be at 80 degrees in the LC Valley as well. Now we're going to see more 80s as we head into Sunday because this is just part of a long-term warming trend. So 77 around the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene area for Sunday. Perfect sunshine. Once again, we'll drop down into the upper 40s. And, well, there you go, Aaron. There are my growing dandelions that I'm probably going to have to pick out here between sometime between now, sometime between now and Tuesday. We'll see how much progress I can make. Uh, hey, look, you'll have plenty of time to do outdoor activities because it is going to be a warm and sunny start to October. Strong high pressure is going to settle in over the west. Going to kick out the low that produced all that rain for us yesterday, at least for some of us. And so we're just going to stay in a gradually warming pattern. I have put this many of the same number in a row in a forecast in a long time. But look at this. We get up to about 80 degrees Tuesday, Wednesday. We're, we're going to see be flirting with the middle, maybe even upper 80s around the lower Columbia Basin. We cool off just slightly as we head into the back end of next week. But that, that is a beautiful forecast that we don't have to worry about much at all. Matt, thank you. Here at 4 News Now, we want to make sure kids all across the inland northwest have a warm jacket this winter. Yeah, winter's coming. Starting tomorrow, we will start collecting new and gently used coats in our annual Coats for Kids drive. To find out where you can donate, head over to kxy.com slash coats for kids. Be sure to bookmark that page. It's ours also where you can go to find out where to pick up a coat when November rolls around. Close to a million people are no longer qualified under President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan. Find out if your loans will still be repaid coming up. <laughs> Just like everything else, the price of Thanksgiving dinner is going up. Turkey prices are expected to reach record highs. Find out why coming up next on 4 News Now at 6 o'clock. Download the 4 News Now app today. Lake Talk Creek Winery invites you to our annual harvest celebration, September 30th through October 2nd. Sip our best blends, learn about our vineyards, and snack on Elena's cooking. Come and help us celebrate our 41st harvest. Cheers! Cheers. There's nothing that beats the in-person experience of the Fall Festival of Homes. Whether you're buying, remodeling, or just looking for inspiration, you'll find everything you need to turn your ideas into reality. The 18th Annual Fall Festival of Homes will feature top local builders such as Camden Homes, Toll Brothers, and Greenstone. Sponsored by Fred's Appliance and brought to you by Spokane Home Builders Association. Local leaders, proven resources. Thanks to Joe Biden, food, fuel, everything costs too much. His energy policies and massive spending spree are driving skyrocketing prices, fueling the worst inflation in decades. Two years ago, we were a self-sufficient, energy-independent, energy-exporting nation. Today, our energy production has been crippled. I'm Mike Crapo. I approve this message. Let's stop the spending free-for-all, let loose American energy, and fix inflation. Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. 
But one day, this farmer will use augmented reality to help ensure the best yield. Urban planners will model traffic solutions to help decrease commute times. Exploring a spacecraft in a museum is one thing. But one day, the metaverse will help students learn about the rings of Saturn. The metaverse may be virtual, but the impact will be real. It says here, United Healthcare has America's most chosen Medicare plans and local Medicare plan experts. They'll even find you a plan with good dental coverage. <laughs> How do you know? Scott, my local Medicare plan expert. He helped me find the right plan. With benefits including prescription, drug, vision, and dental coverage, our Washington team is ready to help you find a Medicare plan that meets your needs and budget. Talk to a local Medicare plan expert today at 1-888-SHOP-UHC. Lake Talk Creek Winery invites you to our annual harvest celebration, September 30th through October 2nd. Sip our best blends, learn about our vineyards, and snack on Elena's cooking. Come and help us celebrate our 41st harvest. Cheers! Cheers. More Americans choose ABC News, America's number one news source. Well, Halloween might be a month away, but you're going to want to start thinking about your budget for Thanksgiving dinner already. Just like everything else in the supermarket, experts are predicting the price of turkey to reach record highs. Currently, the retail price for boneless, skinless turkey breasts more than doubling, now near $7 per pound. A particularly bad outbreak of the bird flu is wreaking havoc on farms. Nearly 46 million birds affected across 40 states. Adding to that, farmers are facing their own rising costs, but experts say there's still ways to save money. Perhaps think about getting a frozen bird rather than a fresh turkey this year. Ways to, to really stretch that dollar so that we can all be together but still have that traditional Thanksgiving dinner. New tonight at 6 o'clock, President Joe Biden's administration is scaling back eligibility for its student loan forgiveness plan. Around 770,000 people will be affected by this change, according to one administration official. The debate over the program remains fierce as Republicans ramp up legal efforts to stop it from taking effect altogether. Emily Schmidt explains who no longer qualifies. It did not resonate, you know, like how much the payments would be uh, once I graduated. Brittany Williams is a doctoral student with $80,000 in debt. She's one of thousands waiting for President Joe Biden's administration to roll out the first wave of student loan forgiveness next month. There's more work to be done. But instead of doing more, the administration is actually scaling back eligibility. Borrowers whose federal student loans are guaranteed by the government, but held by private lenders, will no longer qualify. Good morning. The scale back so announced the same day six Republican-led states sued President Joe Biden in an effort to block the ban. In reality, the president's actions violate the law and are beyond his authority. The White House continues to argue that its student loan forgiveness plan is legal prior to the changes. The Congressional Budget Office released a very rough estimate stating Biden's plan could cost the government $400 billion. Our nation's finances are less secure because of the student loan bailout. For Williams, debt forgiveness presents a chance to put money back in the economy. We're postponing marriages, we're postponing, you know, having children, we're postponing owning our own homes because the weight of the student loan debt is just so much. I'm Emily Schmidt reporting. The House of Representatives voted to approve a bill to fund the government through December 16th, avoiding a government shutdown that would have started at midnight. In addition to money to keep government agencies afloat, the short-term funding measure provides around $12 billion for Ukraine. The bill now heads to President Biden for his signature. Also new tonight. Starting tomorrow, food stamp benefits will go up by more than 12% because of inflation. That's about an additional $104 for a family of four each month. Nearly 41 million Americans count on food stamps to help buy groceries every month. The increase does not completely make up for the rising cost of food. That's because grocery prices jumped more than 13% in August. We have much more coming up tonight at 630. Including giving you a bird's eye view of what Coeur d'Alene looks like when the leaves begin to change in this week's Air for Adventure. And the holiday season is right around the corner. It's the busiest time of year, especially for the United States Postal Service. What's being done to make sure your packages arrive on time? 
Stream 4 News Now on your TV for free with the KXLY Plus app. Democrats in Washington are threatening our way of life. Reckless spending fueling inflation. Shutting down energy production here at home. A push to defund the police. Kathy McMorris Rogers is fighting every day to stop them and protect Eastern Washington. Cutting spending to curb inflation. Unleashing American energy production. And making sure law enforcement has the resources they need. Kathy McMorris Rogers, our voice. I'm Kathy McMorris Rogers, and I approve this message. Change is just a part of life. As humans, we're wired to handle life's changes, big and small. COVID-19 is one of those changes, and it's sticking around for a while, whether we like it or not. Each new wave requires us to adapt, to adjust, but together, we will. COVID keeps changing, but so can we. Visit TakeCareWhat.org to learn how. At Jewelry Design Center, we're one of the few shops in the country that can do everything in-house start to finish. We're fortunate enough to have two locations, one in Spokane and one in the Tri-Cities. We don't send anything off-site. It's all done right here, and what that means for you is better pricing because we don't have a middleman that we have to mark up onto. And quicker turnaround time, you're having it back in a matter of days rather than a matter of weeks or months. We're in this for the long haul. We want to be your jeweler for life. Mr. World knows if you want new glasses at maximum velocity, you don't have to go to extremes. You just have to go to Eyeglass World. Other places fall flat with sluggish tempos, but Eyeglass World's in-store labs keep things upbeat, helping you score custom-made glasses the same day. And how's this for an encore? You can get two pairs for $89. So schedule your eye exam online today at eyeglassworld.com, the world's best way to buy glasses. Watch 4 News Now as the Extreme Team upgrades the Carl Maxi Center. What we're going to do is go in and get into the next phase of operation. That's going to be a new library. There's going to be a place in back. There's going to be a nice patio. Watch 4 News Now's Extreme Team, sponsored by Horizon Credit Union. Live from downtown Spokane, this is 4 News Now at 6.30. Here's a live look over downtown Spokane. A beautiful evening. We got some much-needed rain yesterday. It stopped just in time for the weekend. Yes, it did. I hear that we have some warmer temperatures on the way as well. I hear that as well. Meteorologist Matt Gray is talking about Who how many of the same <laughs> numbers we're seeing in a row right now. <laughs> yes, I did. I did say that about our seven-day forecast. There's, there's a lot of sameness, but I, I think when you see it, if you're just tuning in, that it's not going to be a bad thing. At least I don't think you're going to think it's a bad thing. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that later, but hey, beautiful sunset right now just going down in Spokane 631 it is the official sunset time boy starting to lose that light earlier and earlier temperatures in the low 60s what a beautiful evening we are set up for as those clouds that hung around through lunchtime just kind of cleared away all of a sudden as the stormy weather we saw yesterday has all but moved on from our neck of the woods. So as we head into the weekend, we've got beautiful conditions. Now we'll have more beautiful conditions heading into tonight. Clear skies might see a few areas of patchy fog like we did this morning. Temperatures gradually dropping into the upper 40s. Don't really think you're going to need a jacket for too terribly long, though, if you, uh, well, even if you think that this is jagged weather. I know some folks, you know, some folks, this is still shorts weather. I understand. This is my Florida man talking right now. But we are going to end up with some fairly late summer-like temperatures instead of what we would be thinking we should be feeling for the beginning of October, which does start tomorrow. That wet weather, by the way, good thing we got it yesterday because it's going to be staying away for a while. So we've got warm weather and we got dry weather coming up in your first alert forecast. I'll show you. Matt, thank you. United States Postal Service workers have a big job getting your mail and packages delivered safely. They're extremely busy during the holidays and they're short staffed. Vanessa Perez tells us what the Postal Service is doing to hire more people. The Postal Service is calling it a mega blitz hiring event, and its goal is to fill 2,000 positions across the state. Today, recruiters made their way to eastern Washington, speaking with potential candidates at the Shadle Post Office. 
Delivering mail is a service to the public. USPS is looking for more people to carry out the important work. It's fed my family and raised my kids, and I think it's, it's a public service job. So carriers are our lifeline out in the field with customers. It's oftentimes they're the ones who find customers that might be in trouble or something. The Postal Service in Washington is doing its first ever Mega Blitz hiring. In Spokane, the postmaster wants to grow the team by over 50 people. We've got room on our team. As you probably know, the Spokane uh, Post Office does a fantastic job. We've got some great employees, and, but we do have room for some more members on our team to come in and, to, and have a career with us. Ever since COVID, uh, it's, we've had staffing shortages just like many, many other organizations and entities. So yes, we, we have opportunity for career positions. Positions range from inside the post office, mail carriers, and more. To apply, you have to be 18 or 16 with a diploma. You also need a clean driving record if applying to driving positions and be a U.S. citizen for five years. We need enthusiastic people who wanna come and work for us that uh, want a career. If you missed today's hiring event, you can visit our website at kxly.com to learn how you can apply for the Postal Service. Spokane's postmaster also says he's certain your packages will arrive on time this winter. Live in studio, Vanessa Perez, 4 News Now. Vanessa, thank you. With a beautiful weekend in store, where better to spend it than perhaps Green Bluff? Local farms are bursting at the seams with all the fall fixings. And we have apples in the newsroom right now. Shh, There's a, a little... A little uh, I think it's a crate. What is that over there? It's a box. Oh, it's a box of Cardboard apples. box. Esther Bauer <laughs> brought them for us. She went to Walter's Fruit Ranch, and she shows us what they have to offer. I'm up here on Green Bluff this morning. It is absolutely breathtaking. Orchard is blooming. Apples are ready to be picked just in time for Fall Festival. All of our hard work comes to fruition. Fruit fills the trees at Walter's Fruit Ranch. Their Harvest Fall Festival is happening now from 10 to 6 every weekend in October. You can pick your own apples and pumpkins. Kids can pet the sheep, see the sunflowers, and get lost in the corn maze. All that rain we had this spring, it's the densest uh, corn maze I've ever seen. It's gonna be hard to find your way out. To make sure you can find your way into the festival, they suggest buying a parking pass online. This way your spot's guaranteed and you can spend more time enjoying all fall has to offer at Walter's Fruit Ranch. Esther Bauer, 4 News Now. New tonight at 6.30, starting tomorrow, you will be able to use your phone to pay to get on the bus using the new connected fare system. Here's how it works. You can create an account on the STA Connect app. There, you will have access to eConnect cards that you can load up with money using a credit or debit card. STA is also expanding its reduced and zero fare options. Now, anyone 60 or older or people with disabilities get a 50% discount. And a new restaurant is now open in downtown Spokane. De España just opened in the old Incredi Burger and Eggs building. And they say the cuisine is Spanish influenced with a Pacific Northwest flair. Looks really good. I'm hungry right now. <laughs> they specialize in small plates or tapas. Perfect for trying out what's on the menu. It's going to be like kind of family style-esque. You know, order a bunch of small plates. Everybody shares. Head chef Eric Strandhagen says it's really about that experience while you're dining. So the meal may take a little longer because there's so many small plates and reservations are recommended. New tonight at 630, experts are once again sounding the alarm as they're finding more creative ways to gain access to your bank account. ABC's Will Reeves spoke to one man who was convinced by scammers to give them access. It happened so quickly. Marcus Miles says his bank account was drained after he got a text message that seemed to be from his real bank, Capital One. I was caught off guard, but I might as well have just walked out my front door and given all of my money to the first person that I saw. The text reading, did you attempt a $500 Zelle transfer? Zelle is a mobile payment transfer service embedded in your banking app that allows you to send money to people directly between bank accounts. But Miles said he hadn't sent any money, so he was eager to talk to who he thought was his bank. I was convinced because uh, he kept saying, looks like someone has, is accessing from an IP address in Texas. Looking back, 16 minutes worth of manipulation and boy, was he good. 
He then received a text to confirm his username and login. Because I was getting a text, um, I actually was sending it back. Moments later, his account empty. His story, one of many from across the country. Who the heck would have all that information? Demi Woods, speaking to our station WLS in Chicago, lost $3,500. Our San Francisco 7 on your side unit hearing from dozens of consumers. Lawmakers are now working to make these money transfers safer. Congress is considering a draft proposal to ensure that consumers who get induced into scams have protection and get their money replenished by the banking industry or whatever platform they've used. Zelle is out with its own TikTok, reminding customers that their banks will never call for personal info because they already have it. And if the caller says it's urgent, question it. And Capital One has confirmed to ABC that they are crediting Marcus for the unauthorized transaction. Zelle had these tips for protecting yourself from scams. So one, avoid sharing personal details online. If you receive a text or a call from someone claiming to be your financial institution, hang up and then call the institution back yourself. The Seattle Mariners can clinch their first playoff appearance in 21 years tonight. Coming up in sports, Alex Crescenti has more on how they can do that and the larger goal the team has. Sign up for breaking news alerts with the 4 News Now app. 4 News Now is brought to you by Culligan Water. What do you get when ice cold beer, gourmet burgers, sports, and the Pint House brand come together? Good times. That's right. Pint House Burgers and Brews is now open at the former Good Times Pub location in the Spokane Valley. It will always be good times at the New Valley Pint House Burgers and Brews. Granite Concepts. We doubled our size. Doubled our weekly output. Created even higher fabrication quality. Shortened the time to completion. Granite Concepts. Beauty set in stone. Get exactly what you want. Wendell Ford is ready to help you find that vehicle you've been wanting to buy. Built for you. F-150, Bronco, Bronco Sport, Explorer, Mach-E, and Maverick. Here's how it works. Make a list of options you want. Wendell will work with you on financing to fit your budget. And then we will order the vehicle of your dreams or select from current inventory. Get exactly what you want. Built for you. Wendell Ford at the Y. Drive for generations. This season, fall into Coeur d'Alene. Fall is a great time to visit Coeur d'Alene. With awesome weather, fall color cruises, exciting events, a variety of food, beer, and wine selections, and amazing accommodations. It's the perfect time to stay and play in CDA. Visit cdafall.com for more information. What's the only thing better than one Pint House Burgers and Brews? How about two? We are now open in the Spokane Valley. The same great sports and music videos, friendly staff and servers, gourmet burgers and ice cold brews. Pint House Burgers and Brews, now open in the Spokane Valley. Next ET, our new interview with George and Amal Clooney. How their 8th anniversary celebration is still going. They said it wouldn't last. Plus, our exclusive with country legend Willie Nelson. Still booked and busy at 89. Who do you want to still collaborate with? Anybody. Can you say? <laughs> ben, only wearing the recording booth with Shawn Mendes for his new movie project. It's time for the world. Next ET. Watch 4 News Now at 6 and Entertainment Tonight at 7.30. Well, your focus tonight, I think we were pretty lucky to get the rain showing up yesterday when we did, considering what the forecast looks like for the next 10 plus days here in the inland northwest. We saw record setting rainfall yesterday in Spokane and Pullman, and if we had a longer set of records in Rathdrum that was kept records, I think that you would see that as well being uh, probably the most rain that Rathstrom's seen on September 29th. But man, there was a lot of good rain. Most of the rain that we have seen this whole month of September. It has been another 
very dry month. And because of that, before the rain fell on Thursday morning when they updated, they only updated once a week, the drought monitor put most of Spokane County back into a moderate drought. So that is the first time since before we had all that rain and snow in spring that we have been back into drought conditions around a larger part of the inland northwest. So it is good that we've gotten this rain and we are going to continue to see more drier and warmer conditions. So, you know, we got a bit of a late start to summer. Looks like we're going to end up with a late start to fall as well, the way things have been going. All that wet weather has moved on into Montana. And so the storm that brought us all of this, that's going to be kicked out of here. And you can see all clear skies as you look towards the Pacific Coast. And so we're going to end up with lots of warm conditions and above average temperatures overall, even though it's certainly not going to be like summertime heat. But but it's definitely going to be hot for fall. Tonight, 48 degrees, upper 40s. Usually we'd be getting down to the mid 40s a little bit more consistently. That has not happened so far this season. And for tomorrow, high in the region, right about 76 degrees. That's just a few degrees above where we would normally be. Your average high as we enter the month of October is in the upper 60s and low 70s, just depending on where you are around the region. Still, you can't complain about weather like this. Sunny skies. It is going to be a absolutely gorgeous weekend. We'll see a little bit of cloud cover and some showers tried to get across the Bitterroot Mountains of the Montana state line. Not expecting that much to get across. Maybe we get one sprinkle or two on the Camas Prairie. Everybody else will be basking in that sun as we continue on through the weekend. And that is basically our only chance for wet weather until perhaps over a week from now, the way things have been looking on the computers, at least from what we have seen today, there is going to be some persistently sunny conditions, and that means above average temperatures. So we're going to warm up pretty quickly. 50s as we get into the early hours of the morning, 60s at lunchtime, and then we're going to hang out in that middle 70s portion. Likely in parts of the valley, we'll even get into the upper 70s. And as we continue to warm up day by day, you know what that means. 80s are on the way back into our forecast. Our official numbers keep us uh, below, keep us in the 70s until about Tuesday. But you know, by the time we get to Sunday afternoon, it's going to be parts of our region well into the 80s. 80s, especially as you work your way in the I-90 corridor. We know we got some hot spots there in the valley. We look even into the longer term over the next 10 days. So now we're getting past into next weekend and into the early parts of the week after. We're talking about a very high chance for above average temperatures. So continuing to see warm conditions and continuing to see dry conditions, in fact, very dry conditions to our neighbors uh, to the east in western Montana. So, yeah, might be a bit of a late start to fall and all the things that come with it. But, hey, can't complain about the beautiful weather like this, at least for a week, up around 80 degrees, Tuesday, Wednesday, with the slight cooling by Friday. All right, thank you, Matt. Well, the first full week of fall is coming to an end, and over the next few weeks, the inland northwest will be filled with beautiful fall colors I think, even with those temperatures. Probably. I guess we'll just wait and see. Tonight, we're heading east to give you a preview of what you can expect to see when the leaves begin to change. Let's go for a ride on the Air 4 drone over Coeur d'Alene. As an artist specifically, color is what motivates me. Color is what brings me life and joy. Watching all of the colors change, especially around Coeur d'Alene and around the lake, um, is just amazing. And here you get like the bright orange and yellows, and then you'll see that reflected in the lake. So we just have so many amazing scenes around here that get you excited for fall. My favorite spot is the Centennial Trail leading out to Higgins Point around the lake. You get those big leafy trees, and right now they're bright yellow and bright orange. I am a painter, and my paintings are all about celebrating the Pacific Northwest. So I love the Pacific Northwest, born and raised. It brings me so much joy to be able to try to capture some of that on canvas. So I paint a lot of local scenes. As an artist, I'm just very inspired by color, and I'm inspired by the beauty around us, the mountains, the trees, the rivers and lakes. So that's what most of my paintings focus on. My students here at the Croc Center, I always ask them, what's your favorite thing about fall? And all of them said the changing of the leaves, and jumping in the leaves and yeah, it's kind of bringing joy to everybody. 
It's so beautiful. Yeah, I love Coeur d'Alene. I love the whole Pacific Northwest. We're so blessed here. Download the 4 News Now app today. Thanks to Joe Biden, food, fuel, everything costs too much. His energy policies and massive spending spree are driving skyrocketing prices, fueling the worst inflation in decades. Two years ago, we were a self-sufficient, energy-independent, energy-exporting nation. Today, our energy production has been crippled. I'm Mike Crapo. I approve this message. Let's stop the spending free-for-all, let loose American energy, and fix inflation. You are unique, and so are your needs. At Axis Spine Center, we offer a team of highly trained spine care specialists who work together to provide you a customized treatment plan using the most innovative advancements in spine care available. We set new standards so that you can get back to what you love. Axis Spine, the region's only comprehensive spine care center. I'm Jonah, and I'd like to welcome you to the brand new Coeur d'Alene Nissan. You'll find the grand dealership lobby open, comfortable, and relaxing. A service center with state-of-the-art equipment committed to getting you quickly and safely back on the road. There's much more to experience. I'm inviting you to stop in and see us. We're just off Highway 95 in Coeur d'Alene. There's a new face in local news. Kirsten O'Connor joins Aaron Luna and Chris Crocker weeknights on 4 News Now. Committed to our community, invested in you and your family's safety. Get to know Kirsten O'Connor weeknights on 4 News Now. I don't think we've ever had that in 14 seasons. I will work like a lion. I'm a believer. I'm going to make you filthy rich. Let's go. New Shark Tank tonight on ABC and stream on Hulu. My uh, son's name was Carson. He was just the light of my life. His anxiety and his inability to sleep caused him to purchase a pill from Snapchat, and we know that it's what killed him. Congresswoman McMorris Rogers is bringing awareness to this. She personally reached out to me. She took the time to hear Carson's story. She has been driven in trying to prevent further loss. I'm Kathy McMorris Rogers, and I approve this message. More Americans choose ABC News, America's number one news source. Well, it's Friday, which can only mean one thing, another slate of high school football games in our area. As we are approaching the halfway mark of the season, I can't believe it's halfway already, there's still some good out-of-conference games being played as our Alex Crescenti live from Coeur d'Alene High School for an Idaho-Washington interstate matchup as he's pretty familiar with one of those squads. Alex. That's right, Aaron. All kinds of good matchups in our region here tonight, but my favorite probably here in Coeur d'Alene as the Vikings are set to host the Union Titans out of Camas, Washington. And there's not a chance I'm a little biased in this matchup because I am myself a Titan. They're graduated class of 2010, so excited to see this matchup. These two teams have a long history of going deep into the state playoffs. We'll see if they can both repeat there, uh, go into the maybe the semifinals or finals like they have been so many times before. But the biggest game of the day is not even in our region. It is not even in this sport. It is over in Seattle, the Mariners. They are looking to move within a game of their first playoff appearance in 21 years. Last night, they accomplished that. They beat the Texas Rangers in extra innings, bringing the magic number to one. So that means all they need at this point is an Orioles loss or they have to win in the next five days, which pretty good chance they're going to do that with their schedule. But for the manager, Scott Service, he made it clear the goal is much more than making the playoffs. Yeah, we have a really good team. Obviously, the first uh, to check the first box, you've got to get into the tournament or into the playoffs. Um, and the goal with this club is not just to get in. I know that's the goal for a lot of people in Seattle and the Pacific Northwest is to, to end the drought. The goal is to get in the playoffs and go deep and win this thing, get to the World Series. And we have a team that can do that. Now out in New York, it's currently Baltimore 2, New York 1 in the bottom of the 8th there. And the Mariners and the Athletics just got underway. So we will see if 
the drought will end here tonight. Uh, good chance that uh, if the MMs just take care of business, have some good offense, good chance we're going to see that, but we're going to have to wait and see. Anyway, the Washington State Cougars, they'll be looking to get back in the win column tomorrow afternoon after a tough defeat at the hands of the Oregon Ducks last weekend. But they're going to go up against a Cal team that's also 3-1 and one in the season, has made it extremely difficult on the Cougs in the past decade or so, especially with Justin Wilcox at the helm of the Golden Bears, as they've been one of the top defenses in the conference in that time. But Jake Dickert says the identity might be changing a bit. I think they got a bunch of good young wide receivers and, and a really, really good young running back. But obviously when that's your calling card, that's been his focus. And I think defensively they play hard and aggressive. And I think that's the makeup of what you see of him and his past and what he's done and his history. So they're physical and aggressive and they're a tough team to beat. And I think they're proving that. And, and I think they're coming in here with a lot of confidence too on what they've done early in their season. Now, this will be the final home game before late October for the Cougs and their final Saturday game in Pullman before November. Kickoff from Martin Stadium is set for 2.30. And the Idol Vandals will be returning to the Kibidone looking for their second straight Big Sky win as they welcome in Northern Colorado. Kickoff from that one is set for 6 at in Moscow. As for the Eastern Washington Eagles, they'll have to wait an extra day to get their game down in Gainesville underway as a Hurricane Ian pushed back their matchup with the Gators until Sunday morning. Now, of course, we're going to have a lot of good matchups here for you coming up on Nightside with Friday Night Sports Extra. Make sure you stick with us there. we got a full slate of games, including this one from Coeur d'Alene uh, between the Titans and the Vikings. Reporting live from, Mos or from Coeur d'Alene, I'm Alex Crescenti. Back to you, studio. Well, here's a look at ABC's primetime lineup tonight. It's Shark Tank at 8, followed by 2020 at 9. Stream 4 News now on your TV for free with the KXLY Plus app. Satay Bistro, Coeur d'Alene's culinary extravaganza of American fusion dining. From our extensive wine cellar to our unforgettably decadent menu, we'll move your experience beyond ordinary to the extraordinary. Satay Bistro, just off the 4th Street exit in Coeur d'Alene. Thanks to Joe Biden, food, fuel, Everything costs too much. His energy policies and massive spending spree are driving skyrocketing prices, fueling the worst inflation in decades. Two years ago, we were a self-sufficient, energy-independent, energy-exporting nation. Today, our energy production has been crippled. I'm Mike Crapo. I approve this message. Let's stop the spending free-for-all, let loose American energy, and fix inflation. Watch 4 News Now as the Extreme Team upgrades the Carl Maxi Center. What we're going to do is go in and get into the next phase of operation. That's going to be a new library. There's going to be a place in back. There's going to be a nice patio. Watch 4 News Now's Extreme Team, sponsored by Horizon Credit Union. So, you like winning? Maybe it's time you paid a visit to the Kootenai River Casino in Bonners Ferry. Talk about winning. How about great gaming and off-season room rates? How about 109 bucks a night for Kootenai Falls Lodge Rooms and 129 a night for Riverview Rooms? And what if those midweek rooms come with free breakfast for two? Throw in some great new gaming machines and you've got a winner of a getaway. To book your winning getaway, call 888-YOU-ARE-LUCKY or visit KootenyRiverInn.com. What would the degree be for sweater weather for you? 75 to 78. <laughs> Next Live, Terry O'Connell and Rebecca Romaine, plus Colin Hayes. Watch live Monday at 9, right after GMA. For over 75 years, the Ennis family has strived to offer the finest furniture made from all over the world. The hallmark of this family-owned business is their custom-made leather furniture. Nobody offers a greater selection of leather choices or colors than Ennis. Simply the finest. And right now, all our custom leather is on sale. Stop by Ennis of Spokane today. Enjoy the savings and see the hundreds of leather choices we have to offer. Satay Bistro, Coeur d'Alene's culinary extravaganza of American fusion dining. From our extensive wine cellar to our unforgettably decadent menu, we'll move your experience beyond ordinary to the extraordinary. Satay Bistro, just off the 4th Street exit in Coeur d'Alene. 4 News Now is brought to you by Floor and Home by Carpet One. Go for a hike, get on the boat, brutally murder some dandelions in your front yard. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> All of the All above. things that you can do on this beautiful weather weekend. Some may be more socially appropriate than others. How do you really feel about the dandelions? That's um, what I need to know. I'm not happy. <laughs> Look, if you wait long enough, they'll die from cold anyway. So just leave them there. 
but then they'll just blow all over the place. And then I there's think more. It's good for the honeybees. Mm. Try to give you options. Bring them for the.